Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Today Throws Nation. I want to thank you for a Monday edition as we are in lockdown on our COVID-19 crisis and I hope you guys are all safe and healthy. Uh, today what we want to do is a quick kind of extension of one of our Instagram posts and what we're looking at is one of our athletes and we're doing a comparison from a developing athlete, so an athlete with a 120 foot PR, junior in high school here in the US, and with two-time Olympic champion Sandra Pergovich. And we're gonna kind of show you how actually similar, how closely they are actually moving, but those those key differences and those differences of less than probably five-tenths of a second in their full throw is resulting in a 120-foot throw, 35 point, you know, roughly seven meters versus, you know, 71, 40, you know, meters, which is 120 versus, you know, 234 feet. So as we uh, kind of go through, one of the difficult things that that we realize that people face when they're trying to learn throwing or to become a coach is that you want to look at the throw and when you see a throw that happens here you basically are starting to you have to quickly see in roughly two seconds what's going on so you can logically then slow something down now when you look at a world-class thrower like Sandra Perkovich you can see that here she's moving much faster so what do you logically do okay we'll slow it down so we can kind of see everything occurring now, when you put these two throwers together, you're going to actually see that the difference between 230 feet, you can see that Sandra's moving much faster. But what that much faster means is we're really talking about five tenths of a second. So whether you're looking at two seconds or one and a half seconds, you're not really looking at a lot of time. So now what we do with our system is we break it down and we kind of show you how the six pillars work. And one of the key things that we wanted to really kind of go back and show is how similarly a developing thrower is actually moving to a world-class thrower and how that extra five tenths of a second and the efficiencies and the details and the positions are going to make massive differences. So when you look at somebody like Perkovich and you're kind of trying to break down the throw, again, the thing that we've done and what why we created the throwing chain reaction was to help people see the throw and then understand how to work those parts because quite simply, when you have a second and a half to two seconds, right, the difference between world-class and a developing thrower, there's just not a lot of time to work on things. So this is why we always break things down and that's really the role of drills. Now the thing that we're specifically focused on and trying to help athletes and throwers realize is that you do need to break those things down so that they're really easy to understand because they're unnatural. And in order to make those natural things become natural, you have to specifically work position. So that's really the whole basis of our throwing chain reaction system. So when we look at this and I'll fast forward it here to uh, the side by side. Now you can see you can when you're just kind of doing a comparison, you're going to see some obvious differences. Perkovich has better alignment, wider sweep. You're going to notice, but they're also not horribly far off. But there are going to be some key technical details that are significant differences in this with years of training, strength development, all these things is what gets somebody from 120 feet say potentially to 190 feet or 200 feet, or you reach a certain point where you become an Olympic champion, which is a combination of great coaching, great training, great athletic ability, great work ethic. It's the, it's the perfect combo. So now you're gonna notice too, you're gonna see again the difference in the position. Now you can really see the difference in speed. These throws start basically at the same time and you can see where Perkovich really accelerates. And now that's what one, you know, that's what a half a second looks like in slow motion. So now when we break the throw down, the thing that we really wanted to kind of do with this video is just have people start being able to see their throw. And that's what we do with the throwing chain reaction system. So if you start to look here, you're gonna see that once we, we, we break it together and we sync them up, so I'm going to go through, let's do this. Now we're going to go through and we're going to break down the six pillars. So you're going to notice what we're going to show you is just there's going to be key alignments. You're going to see different positions of the legs and the hips and the orbit, right? So we're looking um, we're looking at the orbit. We're looking at how, how the leg's situated. And we're actually looking at the hip position. But what we're also trying to point out is that this isn't that horribly different. And so one of the things that we want to help and kind of help motivate throwers and coaches to realize is it's those key details that are going to make all the difference. Now, when we look here and you see as we move into our pillar two, 
you're going to see again those same things we're talking about. Now we're going to look at here the athlete is starting to bring the chest into the throw. Here the athlete is taking a longer path. Um, you're looking at similar positions here, but you see how Perkovich has the hips shifted and this athlete is going to start rotating in. So this is what we call setting up maximum power. So she's setting up maximum power. This athlete's learning to set up maximum power. And so now when we come around here, now you're going to really start to see the differences. You're going to see the difference. You got this system of counterbalance, right? And you're going to really notice this. Here's a big subtle thing. Look at how this athlete's holding the discus. Now, this is something clearly we've worked on with this athlete, but this is going to start to affect the orbit considerably. And this is something that why learning how to carry the discus properly is going to be really significant. So here we have the we have this, and so when we look at our system and we t teach a chain reaction, what we're showing is that a lot of small details will affect bigger details, and that's the whole thing: action reaction, throwing chain reaction. So now when we look and we take we go to our pillar, so here's our three, right? You can see where we've dropped in. And then watch when we go to pillar four, this is where everything really changes. Because of that hand carry position, the orbit's off, the athlete's eyes are down. We've got too large of a, of a space here. And so you're gonna see how actually Perkovich is actually getting her head, her hips ahead, right? You can see the hips are here, look where the knee's at, and look where the arm's at, and look at the difference here we have the, the shoulders and the hips kind of more mashed up and you can clearly see that the twist and wrap portion is where this throw really starts to change. But again, we looked in the beginning and we could see those, those things where it looks close and it is still close. So now when we go here, look at what we're doing where we call this locking down power. So again, look at the vertical line. So Perkovich is gonna be able to rotate through here. This athlete isn't too bad, but look at the difference in the height of the discus, right? So now you can really see this is here. This is really moving through. Look at the look at where the upper body is. Remember, we talked about this back in pillar two. You see that upper body is moving ahead. So where are we going to see it? It's going to be moving ahead early in the finish. So even though she's moving ahead, Perkovich is starting to move a lot faster. And this is where you're going to really see the difference between the two throws, right? So now you can see here um, the athlete, again, working on the block, coming through. But look at the look at the rotation and the hip position here. It's significant, and the discus is higher and being released more out in front. And this is what you see is the difference between a developing thrower at 35 and a half meters versus a two-time Olympic champion with a PR of 7150, roughly. So 7141. Okay. So at any rate, when we look at this. What the biggest point is that we're always trying to do here and kind of when you look at your comparison is that when you're developing, you're actually a lot closer than you think, but it takes years to be able to get to this level. But most importantly, if you're not focusing on the right things every day, you can spend hours and hours and hours, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and the development is going to be slow. And that was one of the reasons what we wanted to point out. And one of the reasons what we created with the throwing chain reaction system was to be able to show people those six pillars so that you can start identifying problems. And with this athlete on the left, she's already done a really great job. She's already improved uh, roughly seven meters this year right around seven meters, so tw just over 20, 22 feet in her discus, and there's a lot more there. So this athlete is actually strong and actually moves pretty quick, but we had to retrain a lot of patterns. And again, just looking at this, you can see she's moving a lot closer than one would think. So the point of today's video is to give you a little motivation. Don't give up, learn to make sure that you're focusing on the right things, learning the right things. That's gonna make all the difference in the world. And that is gonna help you throw farther faster. That's one of our trademarks with the throwing chain reaction system is big results quick. And we hope the same for you. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Be sure if you'd like to learn more about the throwing chain reaction system, click the link in the description. We have a free mini course on rotational throws. It kind of goes through the six pillars to give you more information to help you understand your training. Keep an eye out. If you'd like to dive in deep, we have the throwing chain reaction system itself. And if you like today's video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys on the next video.